So what do we got this week? Uh, Nikon and Canon announced some new lenses. Uh, Adobe's Creative Cloud crashed. And Stephen Colbert called out Amazon on being patent trolls. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat. This is episode 10. Uh, I call this one, okay, we do love drones. We'll just admit that now. Uh, this week we have Narragansett Dell Shandy. Good luck finding it. I, news keeps saying it's pretty much sold out everywhere. It's so exclusive and sold out, everyone has it. Yay! Yay! But, our first story as we led into In the Bump, which is new this week. I'm stealing the pen. I, don't I, know what you I lost both pens, so well. Yeah, you can have that one. I don't write things during the podcast. Uh, even Stephen Colbert jumped on the, hey, Amazon, you're a bunch of patent trolls uh, news this week. Oh, uh, yeah. Except he was much funnier about it than we were. He's funny about everything, everybody. He is. He's just, I'll pretend like that was English. Because it wasn't. It was gibberish. Yeah, it was. It was uh, gibber English. Gibber, gibber Rhode English. Island. That's just Rhode Island. It's Rhode fine. Island. There we go. It's just Rhode Island. It's from so, this. It's just from this. It's, it's from fine. this? Yes. That's the Narragansett Brewing Company's Dell's Shandy. Quite, ta quite tasty. It's tasty. Uh, but yeah, so Colbert did a little comedy spoof, basically calling out what everyone else has been calling out about the whole Amazon thing of you can't. I don't know how you guys got this through, but you really shouldn't have been able to patent taking pictures on a white background. Uh, but I like Colbert's response to it, which is, you know what? I'm going to patent filing a patent. That way, every time someone files a patent, he gets money. I, you know, it's a comedy farce. Not, it's, not a terrible thing, but it was feels funny. like a punt to me. I thought it was pretty funny. I don't know. I didn't watch the rest of the episode. I got to that part, and I was like, yeah, way to go. So... That lasted a long time. <laughs> uh, Sony officially revealed the RX100 Mark III, which normally I wouldn't think much of, but this time they actually did something different. They took the um, hot shoe off of it and replaced because basically the only thing you could do with the hot shoe on it was put on a digital viewfinder. Oh, yeah. So they built in a digital viewfinder that pops up and pops back in when you're not using it. So it looks like a point and shoot when, you, when it's in your pocket, but it pops up. And, it, and uh, the, the other big thing they did, I mean, besides put Zeiss glass on it, because they put Zeiss glass on everything, was they put the same processor in it that's in the A7 line. Oh, wow. So it gives it a significant boost in the, uh, in the processing power and the low light power. So it's, uh, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's a, like a big jump for, you know, point and shoots, basically. Yes, I mean, that's the big frontier. It's yeah. point, you know, mirrorless I mean, they, interchangeable or mirrorless just point and shoots. Yeah, they're taking the, the mirrorless interchangeable technology and putting it into a point and shoot and just saying, hey, we're just going to give you one Which lens. probably makes me more likely to buy it. Cause I don't, I don't want to invest in this mirrorless interchangeable system, so it's... When, when somebody puts out one that I'd be happy with, I might look at it. I'd be happy with a lot of them. They're just kind of expensive for a, whatever they are to us. It's yeah. A lot of people use them. It's I have a hard time investing in a system that needs a lens ecosystem. Well, that's why I, I like the idea of Canon having one because they have the adapter for EOS M to. Oh, EF. Same thing with Nikon. Nikon has one too. It's yeah. just. So you don't have to buy all new lenses. But it defeats can. the whole point of it being a mirrorless at that point. Because you have something that's now this big, well, I, and more awkward to hold than it was with a SLR well, on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I would have a mirrorless that's like this big, and then put on like a 400, 500 lens out to here. It'd be kind of silly. But what little lens do we own at this point? You have a, a 24 70 the size of a grapefruit, and a yeah. 70 to 200 that's the size of you know any big lens. Yeah. But it's I, interesting. I think we're kind of in between. You know, it's yeah. No, you. I, I, I think there's gonna be. A big push in the mirrorless that is just gonna it's it's gonna break somewhere yeah they, they're saying good things about the Nikon v3 one Nikon one v3 mm -hmm. so we'll see how that goes maybe that'll not suck yeah but the other thing that the uh, the RX 100 mark 3 does is it now does full HD video which I guess yeah. they, you would, they, I mean they're even doing 120 frames a second at 720 
So you, that, that's all the processing power they added to it with the new with the new one, and outputs right to HDMI, so you could effectively hmm. output right to a big TV. Yeah, or what to recording? That's out, yeah. output to output to an Atomos or yeah. something like that. And they built in Wi-Fi and near field. So oh, is it, does it have near field? It has near field. Hmm, that's interesting. Because that's always fun to use. Yeah, and you know, Sony has a bunch of apps out there that you can already tie it to. So, and I know you can like download them on like their their version of the smart TV. I forget, I forget what their that line is for hmm. Sony, but you know, you can download the apps to that, and it's already got Wi-Fi in it, so you can hook up to your TV and just browse pictures on your TV from your from your smart your your, your smarter camera. That's cool. Yeah. So cloud cloud is down. Cloud was down for like a day. I didn't see that, so I'm going to let you... Um, well, this happened while I was on the road this week. Oh. But from reading through it, reading, you know, getting the Twitter updates, getting, you know, going through everything, basically the server that controlled whether or not you could log into Adobe yeah, Cloud... that's what always would go down. ...is what went down. And so for most people, they didn't even notice it. Anyone who, who uses a single seat, uses one computer, they didn't even notice it. Because odds are they were already logged in, and since the server was down, it just went, oh, okay, but you're already logged in, so your license must be valid, and let them keep going. Hmm. The only people that really had a problem was anyone creating a new Adobe Cloud account, so any p potential new customers, and people who use multiple, you, who use both, because you could, when you have uh, Adobe Cloud subscription, you can use two computers, you just can't use them at the same time, mm -hmm. but you have to log into one, and it'll log you out of the other and you, as it goes back and forth. And if you were trying to log into your second computer, you couldn't because the cloud couldn't val validate your license and say, no, you are who you say you are. And, hmm. uh, but and So even though people made a big deal about the cloud being, you know, the, the cloud login services being down, it was really a pretty small amount of people were affected. You know, a lot of people who were like, oh, well, I have to work on my desktop and my laptop. Okay, well, one of them's going to work, one of them's not. Or if you work at home and, and you at work, I guess it would really be an issue if it went down while you were at home and you couldn't log in at work, I could see that being a problem. And I know there were some very, very frustrated people. Like there's a, and it didn't help that the guys at SLR Lounge, the ones who figured it out first because they were the ones. Yeah. Uh, they, they got on the uh, online uh, help chat and <laughs> apparently the Adobe employee they were talking to via chat was just utterly useless. Um, first he didn't even, first he told them that they had a trial subscription. Now this is SLR Lounge. Sure. They don't have a trial subscription. In fact, theirs was probably comped because they reviewed so many. They review everything. Um, and, and then they just told them, oh, it's a glitch. And when they tried to dig deeper, a, the Adobe person was useless. And since it's online chat, you could demand to talk to a manager, and you'd never know if you actually talked to another person yeah. because... Just you, get right on that. Yeah. So basically all they could do was offer an apology and... They still haven't yet said what the issue was, but it is resolved. People can log in again. Um, hmm. It was down for about 24 hours. It's a long time, though. That is a long time to be down. Yeah, that's a that's not good. No, but I think that kind of showed where Adobe can learn a little bit and <laughs> and it'll piss off everyone and not piss off everyone, and maybe they'll figure out they need a backup login system. So the new special edition Leica M monochrome only set you back twenty one thousand dollars. Twenty one thousand dollars. So this is just a new edition. They're not actually making a new M version with it. Nope. This is just a new it's, edition of M. It's just the same M. So is it the same M mechanically? It's it's the same M with a what a tan wrap, a tan display case, as in a special edition lens. Yep. Along with being no, what, no, functionally not different? Functionally no different. It has a special edition lens. It comes in a really nice velvet lined case. Yeah, I see the case and I see the lens and I see... And, and it has a tan wrap instead of a black wrap. That's it's, it. It's amazing how much more expensive... I, I get the special edition thing. The, titan, the titanium was expensive too. Yeah. But that similarly was it, mostly a it, color change for a Leica M. But... The, the special it's funny they make a color change because it's a monochrome camera. Yeah. <laughs> the special edition lens is kind of an interesting touch to that, where it's not just a different body wrap. Yeah, you do get you do get the special lens, but really, it's twenty one thousand dollars for a camera that only shoots black and white. 
Yeah, it's, but it's a 21,000 version, $21,000 version of a $6,000 camera. Yeah, and, and I guess, you know, if you're, the market of people who would buy this yeah. are people who are buying Leicas to start with. So, and then. Pretty much. Probably just have more money than brains, because really, <laughs> what else are you going to do with it? Yeah, so get back to drones because we can't go ten minutes without. We can't go about ten drones. minutes without talking about drones. I love well, drones. Well, that's I mean that's kind of the frontier of tech for and, people anyway. And it's going to come up in like every episode as long as news or products keep coming out. So uh, we do love drones. It's something we want to play with. So I'm just trying to find the cost. So this is the pair releases a drone with Oculus Rift support. So it's a built-in 14 megapixel camera from Parrot drone. So it's the AR, AR drone 3.0. Bebop. The Bebop. The Bebop drone. They call it the Bebop. I'm, I'm thinking the next one's going to be called the Rocksteady. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a remote Wi-Fi, same thing as a lot of other tech for drones. Yep. But this one does have something fun about it. Oh, with the Oculus, Oculus yeah, Rift, yeah. Rift support? The Oculus Rift support. So you can put on your Oculus Rift, because, you know, everybody who has drones also can afford Oculus Rifts. Well, yeah. <laughs> So it's just a wide-angle lens that's cut and then software edited to be two? Mm -hmm. All right, that's interesting. And the software does it, so you can, and, and, and if you don't know what an Oculus Rift is, you gotta look this up, but it's basically a virtual reality device that lets you pop it on and now you are in it. And this way, I think their idea was that you could feel like a bird flying it. Yeah, I, I get the idea. It seems like it's still really early for that, but they're saying it'll cost more than the $1,000 Phantom DJI rigs. Yeah. And there's still a bunch of tech issues that people who have used it have said. And lagging and battery life and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, 12 minute battery life. That's not a lot. That, that's where the uh, DJI Phantom 1 was when they released it. It was about 12 to 15 Yeah, now it's like 30. Life. Yeah, they've, they've fixed that. Which is ridiculous. That's interesting. I'd get bored flying for 30 minutes. I wouldn't. I could fly a thing all day. <laughs> See, I think 12 minutes is good. That's about my attention span. I'm I want one of those so bad. If anybody, you know, has one, wants to let me, you know, use it, have or, it. Or, 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 you know, uh, maybe we could rent one for Temple Cod and fly it around the con. No. <laughs> you don't think the hotel would be happy with that? I don't give a crap about the hotel. Those things hurt. <laughs> Let's do some serious damage and hit somebody with one of those. Well, if they've got 12-foot ceilings, you could just fly it up there. Yeah, because that's, that's just so easy. Hey, you're good to have plenty of practice. Now if you rent it, you'll have it for 10 minutes. <laughs> so, so before we get into lenses, um, yesterday uh, I had uh, Jesse Crichton, who was here a couple weeks ago with us, and um, his, his, com his partner in crime, Caitlin, Caitlin Owl, and they were up here with me. Hi, everybody. Tom here doing an interview with uh, these two jackasses who won't put their beers down. Uh, with me in the studio today, I have... I'm Jesse Crichton. And I'm Caitlin Owl. And Jesse and Caitlin and I uh, worked on Jesse and Caitlin's film project. Well, Jesse's film project. Caitlin wrote the script. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Jesse on the podcast, and uh, we're getting to know what was going on, how, we, how the film was uh, getting ready to progress, and we talked a little bit about some DSLR photography and, and videography. And we're going to go a different direction with the interview today uh, and actually talk about the actual filming process and more of the creative side of it. But kind of wrap up our, you know, we wrapped up on the, on the project this week, and, and you finished editing, as yeah, I, finished, for the most part. Finished the uh, final cut for now, Yay. last Sunday. All right. For now. For now. The great mind of a filmmaker, nothing's ever done. That's why George Lucas has released Star Wars 17 different ways. We're not going to talk about George Lucas. Uh, so, you two worked on this project, and I'm really curious, how did you two get to meet, how did you get started on this project together? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> we've worked together for a while. Since September? Yeah, so we're both grad assistants. Ages. Yeah, September, oh my god. <laughs> so we're both grad assistants at Rick. Is that our title? Graduate assistant. Right. Yes. Okay. So um, Jesse was actually becoming friends with someone who was in the movie, a prelay, and she kept mentioning things like, "Oh man, so Jesse's doing this and Jesse's doing that," and I was just like, "I could care less." Like, nice. whatever. Sorry. Nice. 
So one day he put something on Facebook that's like, hey, I need stories for a 10 minute film. And I'm like, oh, looking at my portfolio of like 10, 10 minute plays that I had done as an undergrad and was like, yeah, I'll just give him a couple. <laughs> if he decides he wants them, whatever. So I gave them to him and he was like, all right, well, um, I want to see a couple of other people's work first. And if I like it, I'll let you know. I don't hear from him. So I was like, whatever, okay. I'm not a writer, whatever. You kind of are. And, <laughs> and by the way, you didn't hear from me for like three days. No, it was like three weeks. It was not that long. It was. <laughs> and um, he's like, hey, here's your script. And I was just like, what? And he had already done all the edits and everything. And Exposure was a baby that had been born. So... Um, Facebook, I guess, and a prelay. A prelay. It's all a prelay's fault. Think she'll watch this? No. A prelay? I'll, I'll tag her in it. Maybe, maybe yeah. she'll. <laughs> at the very least, she'll click on it because her name will be in it. Maybe. That's true, yeah. All right. So, I guess the next way to go with this is you know, you, you answered a, a Facebook ad, but what really like got you to unite with Jesse and get this project really going? I've always wanted to work in film. And I've never really had that exposure <laughs> where I'm from. So um, I'm not from Rhode Island. I just moved here less than, oh, 10 months ago now. So when I got the opportunity, I kind of went with it. And I think we collaborate pretty well. I think so. I mean, the film looks pretty good. It doesn't really matter how it looks. It's your deal. It matters well, yeah. how it sounds. <laughs> it's my deal. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, it's been a great semester working with you and putting this together. Yeah. yeah, no, it's been super fun. All right. Well, I know I had fun running cameras for you, for you but uh, I was kind of curious what your take on how the filming went. Sleepily. Yeah, I'll let you know when I remember. I'm still recovering. <laughs> no, because he, he's such an ass. Because, oh, thanks. Yeah, no, anytime. You're like, hey, we're all going to get to the set, which is your house. It is my house. <laughs> and he's like, so I'll see you in the morning. I was like, okay, I'll see you at like 10. It's like 7. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, that doesn't exist in my head. Not on Saturday. <laughs> that is not my fault. That is just the way the film but world see, works. But see, this is what he's, he starts saying. Is he's like, so um, in the film world, we might actually get up at... Five, maybe even four. Yeah, no, seven was a gift. That was a late start. Again, everything he said to me before. <laughs> so it's pretty much we go to the little cafe where um, Hobbit, Hobbit, where Hobbit works. works. Yep. And where they don't screw up my coffee. But they take forever to make it. I'm sorry, yeah. but that, they, I mean, they do. But it's worth it. <laughs> um, it was good. It was really good coffee. But it's like I was not a human, and then I started getting caffeine in me. And I remember being at the table in your house, like standing there and looking over and being like, he looks like my coworker. Oh, hey, that's my coworker's little brother. <laughs> and then starting to wake up and understand, you know, I'm a human on this planet, and this is how I need to behave. <laughs> so that was my first, like, hour. Nice, nice. I don't know, I was too focused on just making sure that the crew were going to be taken care of for the day. You know, I really wanted to make sure that everyone kind of felt like they had a job and a purpose. And I put a lot of, uh, a lot of stress on, like, having, like, a craft services area available. Just those little touches that make it feel more like, hey, I've come to work on this professional set. You know, that was, that was a big thing for me on the day of. Uh, and setting up early in the morning before anyone was awake putting yep. out coffee, you know. I mean, but we had so many components that worked so well. Like, you had everyone from production getting, you know, the first scene ready. I was in the back doing everyone's makeup. Yeah. All of our phones were setting off all the equipment, and we had, like, that line of phones. There was the phone area in the kitchen that, that all yep. lined up. <laughs> so, no, I think it came together really well. I think my favorite part of the day, though, was what I found out happened after. It's like I was laying on your couch, and a prelay laid on top of me, and we were cuddling. <laughs> Sorry, prelay. And um, apparently, one of the camera guys went to a friend of his and was like, "It's really cool to see sisters so close." <laughs> and I was just like, "Cool." So no, I think it all came together very well. We got to see a lot more of a prelay snot than we ever thought we would before. Yep, though I saw most of it actually on the second shooting day when we came back in here. Right, and I didn't. 
And I feel that, like that is something I missed out on. You really did. I mean, the sink was flooded. It was <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Sorry, Aprile. You're not going to watch this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, she had a cold. And then I went and I did it in the bathroom next to her to make her feel better. And I can say my nose is cleaner than Aprile's. Um, anyone watching this probably has not seen the oh, exposure yeah. yet. So what we're actually talking about is the character in the film has to use a neti pot, you know, that nasal irrigation thing. You dump water in one nostril and it comes out the other and cleans you out and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd never even heard of one of these things prior to us filming this. And so I was like, what, what is a neti pot? No one, no one told me until we got to the scene where she uses it the first time. I'm like, you do what? All right, Tom, <laughs> please film this now. Well, I think that was the thing that other than myself and a prele, I think no one else on the set had seen someone do it. I, I'd never seen it before. So I'm like standing in the background. You guys are all cuddled in the bathroom. And a prele yeah, just I'm standing like, in my own shower, getting a shot. <laughs> Into the mirror. And it really just takes this te like little teapot and is like, hey, everybody. And the, your look on your face and like Ming's face in the mirror and your face are just like, like, oh, shit. I didn't know people actually did that. I thought it was a myth. No, a legend. It, it, especially when you're traveling, it's really nice. Nice. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't seem like something I'd take with me traveling. Um, so I lived in London for a while, and my allergies got really bad because of all the pollution. Mm -hmm. So I actually had um, someone bring me a neti pot when they came to visit me. It was glorious. <laughs> all right. I, the, the rest of the filming day, too, from my perspective, was really cool, because that's the first time I'd ever actually been able to assemble a crew of people. Like, you're going to run the camera and you're gonna hold the, the, the microphone boom for me, and you know, people are taking care of things, and I can just focus on you know, barking orders and making things happen and watching the performances and not necessarily working about the, uh, worrying about the technical stuff. And it was a great experience for me. Like, I, 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 want, to, I want to live there, I want to do that all the time. You know, directing film was just, I felt like I was in my element. Yeah, it was amazing, but I think that the person that we're forgetting and the person we didn't credit enough was Elliot. Because okay. he helped keep everyone calm. <laughs> Tom's cat. Elliot is not a person. Elliot is my cat. Are you, t are you saying cats are not people? Yeah, that's, that's uh, He's pretty much a person in my house. You're a bit racist. Speciesist. <laughs> yes. Speciesist, yes. But no, I, I think that was one of my favorite things. Is I was sitting there being script supervisor, so I'm like trying to write down everything that's going on, and all I can hear is Phyllis being like, Katie, what do you see? <laughs> <laughs> I believe Elliot's in the film. Not not visually, but there's one or two spots. If you're listening carefully, you can hear him. Really? Yeah. Uh, I did not catch that. He's awesome. He's pretty <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to come back to one question I asked you in the first interview, even though we weren't going to rehash anything. Uh, now that you have filmed this as a director, and you've done the film side, and you've done the directing side, which one's easier? Easier? Easier. Well, I would say just operating the camera is easier you know you have one responsibility uh, you, you can do it poorly you can do it well but you have one responsibility when you are up in the director producer area you kind of have to worry about everything a little bit and I personally I think that's harder I think that's more challenging. Did you worry about the writing at all? Uh, a little bit. Oh wow. A little bit you know. I, I, I made notes we talked about it all right, which one's more Everything. fun? Which one's more fun directing? All right. <laughs> I, I, I would disagree with you because I like being behind the camera, but that's why I'm director of photography and not director. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So I know you haven't gone mainstream with the video yet because it's, uh, I, I know you have some plans for it, but it, for the few people who have seen it so far, what's your general reception been to it? I think you've been talking to more people about it than I have. That makes me feel a little more insecure, but yeah. <laughs> um, so I actually just got off the phone with my mother, who saw it for the first time, and all she wanted to talk about was a prelay doing the neti pot. <laughs> so she assumed, she's like, why did you make that poor girl do that? Like, she wanted to. No, but why? She's like, why would you, why? And she kept <laughs> going over it. Um, ev other than that, I think everything I've heard has been positive. Um, all the actors um, seem to really like it. Um, I've heard a lot of amazing things about you being able to cut it and edit it and just Great. how yeah. well it looks. 
Yeah. Actually, I've been getting a lot of props that I think maybe should go back to you a little <laughs> bit because a lot of people have been complimenting anyone who's seen it, the composition of individual shots. Uh, it's, it's a little rough in places, yep. um, but for the most part, um, people say it seems very deliberate and very artfully done, and they, they really like the composition of the film, which is nice. It was beautiful. Well, and I, I, I will take some credit, but a lot of it was, I kept asking myself, okay, how would Jesse shoot this WWJD. shot? WWJD. Yes. That's what you need to remember. But I, I did, a lot of it was, okay, I know how I want to shoot this shot, I know how Jesse would shoot this shot, which one's going to be better? And so I actually had to balance that, because like we talked about last time, it was, you know, I shoot like a, like a photographer and you shoot like a filmmaker. So it is very different. And so I had to think, like, how does a filmmaker do this? How does Jesse do this? Okay. So that, that did help in getting the shots, though. I think the only other thing that needs to be mentioned from a creative standpoint is how amazing the last scene with Aprilia is. Where it's yes, just the, I was about to mention her that. Her focus, uh, there's the focus that's like a shot of her <clears throat> looking into the mirror. Well, you, you oh. still weren't in the room for any of that, I was right? sitting outside listening yeah. to her, and I was so, just like... So that's the one. That was actually shot by Ryan Pease, who's yep. not with us right now. Um, but that was the one. He, I, was, I was watching him. He cradled his camera in his arm, so the lens was up on his elbow, and he leaned back against the door at like a 15-degree angle, and he just stood there for like six minutes was or he, something. Was that when he fell? That's when he, he almost fell. fell over. That's dedication. And so he did this over-the-shoulder shot of a prelay in the mirror after she did the neti pot, and she has like this nervous breakdown, you know, this, this anxiety thing. And it's just, it's a beautiful shot. It was amazing. And it's amazingly acted. I, I, I get choked up watching her. Yeah. I, it, uh, that girl, I will forever be indebted to her. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely the high, po high point. And I was lucky enough, um, I used uh, Incompetech to pull some music. Yep. And I found this little like piano piece. It was a little eerie that just, I, I mean, maybe it's not perfect, but I felt like it just added the right mood to that shot. Well, you're oh, tense yeah. when you watch that scene. Yeah. Like you, you feel what she's feeling, and you kind of start to come down, and you're like, okay, I, I get where this is going. And she just, oh, it takes my breath away every time I watch it. I'm like, how did you do that? So, All right. you know, I'm, I think I'm not gonna make the video public yet, but put a link to it. With, All right. with this with interview, interview? With this podcast, All right. so that people can, and anyone who watches this can, 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 can see it that way. All right, I'll link to it in the video. That way people can click through and take a look at it. Because, I mean, we can't talk about it for 20 minutes, half an hour, and be like, well, we can see it in July yet. sometime, maybe. Yeah. That, that, that's fair. Thank you for uh, letting me put that up so people can see it. It is a very great project to go, I mean, you should absolutely go in and see it. Uh, so... My last question for you guys, what's next? I'm gonna finish this beer. Yeah. And then walk out that door. That is the next thing on the list. All right, so no, no, <laughs> no projects coming up, nothing? Um, uh, I've been recruited to write Jesse's thesis project for his yeah. master's degree. N next year we're both entering the final year of our master's degree programs and uh, Caitlin's very kindly volunteered to write a script for for us all to film. Which is in progress. The concept has been pitched and accepted. Yeah, yeah, I really like it. And um, it's going to throw a little bit of my point of view into things. And um, I don't want to give too much away, but we're going to be working. For all my eight subscribers, you're worried about that. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> um, so am I. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so all five of you out there, hey, what's up? Um, it's about gaming culture from a female perspective. So there's going to be a lot of Magic the Gathering. There's going to be a lot of different um, horrific nerd references that I may have said at some point in my life. Uh, Grant, if you're watching, uh, I'm going to ask you later to film uh, Friday Night Magic, basically. Uh, I'm sure Grant will. Uh, I, th I think he'll, he'll, he'll appreciate having the store. In, in a oh, little yeah. film. And a little credit at the end, filmed on location at the Temple Games, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then for me, like I'm working on my professional projects, and I think Jesse's pretty much booked me for the rest of the summer. Yeah, yeah. A as much as possible, you're going to be writing for me. Yay. <laughs> I just imagine like, you showing me my part and being like, so, got those pages done? <laughs> like, it's <laughs> six in the morning. Yep, it's late. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> um, 
No, but over the course of the summer, actually, now that you mention that, like between now and when we start working on what's going to ultimately be my thesis project, I would like to do a couple more shorts with you people. Like nothing. <laughs> no, Sorry, you people. You people. You people. All, Nothing that's 20 minutes long like exposure is, but some little five minute pieces well, we to were, try out some different techniques and types of shooting. We've been throwing around the idea of showing me DM for the first time. It's one of them. And kind of doing a background of what I know about DMing, the games I've played, and the me actually trying to run, because I'm pretty sure that'll be hilarious for all involved but myself. That's generally the case for yeah, DMs. So, um, <laughs> Been thinking about that. Um, we're also going to start working on uh, relaunching the media files. Yep, that's a big thing that's happening right now. I don't know if you've been looking at the WordPress site at all. I've been but contributing to it. Yeah, yeah the, the last couple of weeks you have been. Uh, I've started to move some things around. We're going to get some more writers involved. We actually already have some writers, so yep. if you're watching this and you want to write, please get in touch. Uh, the, uh, Please work with me. The Media Files mm -hmm. podcast, which we're going to go record in like an hour. Yep. Uh, it, we're we're going to play around with that format a little bit, tighten it up, you know, try to try to improve that so it's a little bit more than it's been lately. Lately, we just we go downstairs and we get really drunk for fifteen minutes, and, then we, go up and we talk. The orgy. Then, then we talk for like an hour, and I don't listen to it. I don't listen to my own show. I don't know what how it comes. I don't off. get why you guys don't listen to it. I listen to it every week. <laughs> Most of the time, because it's me. Like, why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't listen to it because I don't want to have to recall yeah. what I did. But as I said, we're gonna tighten. We're gonna tighten up the format of that show a little bit too. So um, yeah. and then we're actually gonna do some editing. No, no, no editing. <laughs> but you know, hopefully, all these pieces are gonna start to come together. You need to start editing. Uh, you, you do. You do. Um, I have to edit this. So this gets not, edited. It's not video. But it. No, I mean, there's just like times I take chunks out. Yeah. And, then and, and it's a lot harder for me because I have to deal with camera. I have to like find a way to make it look like that was a natural transition, even though it's like not. Well, no, I know. <laughs> I know. You should have seen the mess that exposure was while I was trying to piece it together in different takes. And oh, no, okay. no. It's like. <laughs> D different camera angles, different takes. Sound doesn't line up. Like it was, it was a challenge. I learned a lot cutting exposure together, and uh, the next film is going to be shot very, very differently. And then um, we're working on a secret project that should be coming out in July. Excellent. Teaser. Are we? Yeah. Which one is that? Apparently it's not so secret because Jesse doesn't remember. I probably do remember. It's but so secret a... he doesn't know. Yeah, about. that's the thing. The one that we were talking about. The one that I've been talking about since PAX. Okay. There you go. Spoilers. Um, so this summer, other things we're going to look at shooting. Um, like, like I was saying, I want to do like some little shorts uh, among those. Like I want to see if we can do like a really good dramatic film noir kind of thing. I want to see if we can choreograph and effectively film and edit a fight scene. You know, throw some punches. Like, I want to see if we can do these things because as we practice them, we're going to work them into what the thesis is going to be. We should have a bar fight. We need a bar. We need a bar. Well, we, oh, need a we, we just talked to Bob at Sullivan's Public House in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> we, we drop as many names as we can on this podcast. Hopefully, somebody will sponsor us eventually. It's Sullivan's Public House, Armistice Boulevard, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Park at the CVS. Yes. Where we drink Narragansett Lager on occasion. Yeah, so um, I'm taking classes this summer, so I will be kind of MIA for a while. But other than that, working hard, having fun, drinking beer. All right. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you for your time. Thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm definitely going to cut this into the podcast this week. It's good to know. And Cheers. which we'll be recording a day late this week, but that's okay. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, actually, it, it was a lot of fun doing that interview. So uh, I would like to have gotten him in with all of us chatting, but that just... Uh, I was busy. You were busy. I had stuff to do and look at. Hey, you got to be a photographer sometimes. I wasn't being a photographer at all. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was, uh, the Brimfield Antiques Fair was, t was this weekend, which, right. for anyone who doesn't know what the hell that is, is a massive flea market, the scale of which I wouldn't ever want to think about having to organize. It's, it's an entire town of flea market. Wow. It's the only way I can describe it. It's probably a half mile long road with like 15 tents deep on either side, these <laughs> big 10 by 10 tents. And there's just so much stuff. 
there's like just to think about how much stuff there is. Like your keyboard? Yeah. If you take if you take every every antique shop and antiques dealer you can think of and cram them into one place, that's what you end up with. But it's it was fun. It's a lot of antiquing. Spent about seven hours walking around. Cool. So, uh, there's this a bunch is, of new lenses. There's a bunch of new lenses out there. Like, like an insane. Like I've got three pages of just new lenses. Although it'll take us about five minutes to there's go. There's only one that matters. You're right. The the new um, where's their teleconverter? That's the only thing that matters here, right? Actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's expensive. They're five hundred dollars. That's why I don't have one. I will. I need one at some point. So the, the new teleconverter is the Nikon uh, TC fourteen E three. So it's the third version of the one point four X teleconverter for Nikon. Um, I haven't seen anything about what makes it better at the third edition of it, but that's generally it's supposed the, to lose less light than the previous one. I'm sure it's. It's like it's like a half like anything. It's the, the next stop up. It'll be more yeah. light in, more fidelity, sharper, all that kind yeah, of stuff. It's supposed, it's supposed to be like a full T stop better than the last one. Full full stop better than the like last one. Full T stop. Yeah. You still lose the F stop difference. Yeah, but but you lose stop it. of light difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're still five hundred dollars, but they're the most commonly used converter because they lose the least light. They lose the least quality at the same time. So that's what I would look at with my my seventy to two hundred at some point. Yeah. I've been looking at the Canon one and going. Hmm. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a converter. I would use it a lot because I do a lot of nature stuff, but yeah, I don't need it that bad. I'd rather have a macro first and then yep. work towards that. And then that Canon over there, which yeah, is not a Canon, the it's actual, a Nikkor, but the Nikkor announcement lens that it matters is uh, the 400 millimeter f 2.8 f LED VR. So it's the VR. 400 millimeter f 2.8 Nikkor lens. So this is, is it three? This this is twelve thousand dollars. Yes. This is twelve thousand dollar lens. It's three thousand dollars more than it's the previous 400 millimeter. Yes, but it's also two pounds lighter. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, and it has VR where the other last one didn't. Yeah, I. I'm so not you've sure got that's, two major upgrades. I'm not sure that matters that much, really, because you still can't hand shoot it. That's true. But. I, I understand having to haul it into the woods. It would be nice. You could hand shoot it at like an eight thousandth of a second. It would be difficult to hold. <laughs> it's not about it's not about stable. It's a hold at all. But it's a hell of a thing. That is that is one hell of a lens, and that that's probably the biggest piece of lens announcement that came out all week. Yeah. Because it's the biggest honking lens that I've seen in a while. It's a nice update for kind of an exotic lens that's not It, it is, and it's nice to see that they're, that they're still putting some love behind the exotic lenses, because sometimes you'll see like a lens revision it takes a decade to get a revision out there. Absolutely. So when you see it, you're like, oh yeah, even though you'll never buy that $12,000 lens, it's exciting. Uh, rent to one. one. Could rent one. Kind of curious what that's going for on borrow lenses now. It's probably a lot. Probably. Like 250 For the weekend? Three days. Three days? I would bet, but I don't know. Hey, if you, if you rent on Friday, for this Friday, they're giving Memorial Day free. Because <gasps> there's nobody working in their shop. Exactly. Oh my god, what a coincidence. <laughs> that you can't mail it back. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Um, you know, on, on the light side, as opposed to the dark side over there, I get to say that because the white Canon Rebel SL1 came out. It's called the light side. Why? Uh, why did they make a white one? Yeah. I don't know. But it was popular in Japan, so they made a U.S. version. Yeah, because that always works. Yeah, yeah. So it's a white camera with a white lens, and it's still an SL1, which is the world's smallest DSLR camera. If you believe the, uh, if you believe the, the marketing. That's extremely interesting. Uh, but on, on the things I could use side of this, um, there is also Canon released a new 16 to 35 mil millimeter F4 L lens. It is image stabilized and has the ultra silent motor, which all L lenses do. So I don't know why they even bother to keep calling it out. Um, it's a little slower than its 2.8 equivalent because that lens already exists, so they, the 4 doesn't. Um, but it's a huge bump up in the IS. It's, it's four stops worth of IS now. Yeah. And it's. Twelve hundred bucks as opposed to eighteen hundred. I have issues with f four 
glass. I just, I, I do. I, I appreciate I've shot with the, the Nikkor 24 to 120 f4 quite a bit. Yep. And people, some people swear by it for event stuff, but I just it's, don't like. It's a, it's a decent range for event stuff. It's an extremely nice range to have for event stuff. I get that. I just don't. I'm not a fan of carrying around f4 glass. It's. I, just, I know you you would shoot 0.7 glass if you could. No, I I think 2.8 glass is for your depth of field is is a decent compromise. It's right in the center. You can get enough depth of field being at like 3.5 and get sharp at 3.5. With f4, you want to stop that down a little bit to make sure it's sharp with the glass. So now you're at 5.5, 5.6. 5.6. Which is a lot for a $1,200 lens to be shooting at 5.6. I don't know. I, but the. You, you take that versus the price difference. Well, there isn't a 2.0 or 2.8 mm -hmm. 24 to 120. There's, there's the 20, 24 to 120 range doesn't have a 2.8. No, what I'm saying at the 1635. The 1635. Uh, why? Why a 1635 range? I don't. I don't know. See, the, that's why where like the Nikkor or the 1424 really is a hell of a thing. Yeah. I. It's a very interesting range thing where. 1635, there is 1635 on both sides, but the 1635 Nikkor is worse. It's not really a, a good option because we have the 1424 so readily. Like a lot of yeah. people use that a lot. Yeah. But it's an interesting lens. You see a lot of F4 options now, which is something. I'm, I'm, I'm curious not about sure that. I, maybe we can get a Canon rep on the phone and ask them no. that one day. Yeah. I, Someday, yeah, you know, like they're a year cheaper. From now they're cheaper, and the ISO range is higher, so they don't need lower f-stops to deal with the ISO not being good in digital cameras. You just lose the depth of field. Yeah, creatively you lose you lose a lot, and then they're not as tied to optical quality at high hmm. high f-stop or low f-stop, whatever you want to call it. But it's nice to see a cheaper, still pro quality lens. That's it's nice. It's nice for people who, because I think Nikkor, Nikon came out with a, what was it, an 18, 1835 G, like it's a pro lens, yeah. that same that same kind of thing. F4 looks like a pro lens, has the zoom ring on the outside, on the inside, the focus on the outside, so it's easier to use. That's interesting direction. Yeah. Uh, you just keep seeing more F4 lenses out there, which is, but at the same time, you're seeing the higher end lenses get even wider than they were. So, you know, other than the Canon 85 millimeter, which went from a 1.0 to a 1.2 in its last revision. Uh, but you're seeing a lot more lenses that are pushing 1.8 to 1.4. And even some that are pushing 1.4 to 1.2 now. Yeah. So, you, you, I think it's, it, it's like, it, the gap is getting wider between the super pro, you know, the, the, the super pro lenses, the Low end pro lenses and then the consumer lenses. You're, you're seeing more of a gap. Well, yeah, you're them. seeing a faster, a faster f4 lens versus a slower high aperture lens. Yeah, which I, I get. It's nice to have the choice, I guess. Yeah. No. Uh, the 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 other lens that Canon announced this week is mostly designed and and people. At first, shook their heads a little bit and said, what the hell are you guys thinking with this one? And then when Canon said what they were thinking with this one, people went, oh, I get it. Yeah. Um, it's an EFS 10 to 18, 4, 5, 5, 6 variable with image stabilization. And at first, people scratched their heads and said, what are you doing? And then they went, this is for video shooters on a 70D. And everyone kind of went, oh, no, that makes sense all of a sudden. Because a lot of people are using 70Ds and 60Ds to shoot video. Because mm -hmm. it still does full HD. It, it, it's a high-end consumer, you know, middle-end prosumer camera. And they've given them a lens with image stabilization that works great in video. I mean, it doesn't have to open wide up because, open up wide because you're shooting video. You don't always want to open up wide. That's not to say I didn't shoot half the shots in Jesse's exposure video at 2.8. But, yeah, but that this, was an artistic effect we were specifically looking for. It's nice to see a really super wide ASPC, APS-C sensor lens. Yeah. I shot my smaller sensor with an 18 to 105, so it was nice to have the 18 when you needed it, but it's still not that wide yep. on a crop sensor lens. 
So it's nice, nice yeah. to see a good quality crop sensor lens for that yeah. 70. And, and I mean, basically they, they did the math and effectively it's a 16 to 29, which is great for video when you need a wide shot in video without going to something like a fish eye. Yeah. So. Uh, you can stick it on your white Rebel SL1. You could put it on your white Rebel SL1. It would look silly. Because it just looks so Japanese, it's funny. It, it does, it looks horribly Japanese. And that's because the, there was the, the KISS 4. Yeah, which is, the, the, they call it, the, the Rebel is a KISS in Japan, and it's a, it's a D, or a, like a 1200D everywhere else, but. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Because they have different naming schemes for different parts of the world. And, yep. Because, you know, canon, you know, because aliens. Um, but they even include it with the white kit lens, but it's not the same color white as the L lenses. Yeah, it's white white as opposed to yeah, it's, off, I mean dirty it's white. it's white white. So, you know, it's, they, I they fine. Did, they I did get something. It. I, well, they had to do something because Nikon's putting out those red D three. Yeah, I like, I like the metallic reds. The metallic reds are nice. Not, I don't get it. I, you you know what? I I once took a I laptop apart. Yeah. And painted it that same color red. I would paint them camo. That'd be fun, but. Like the guy in uh, yeah, that that was that guy. That was really cool. That was really cool. If I could get that enamel enamel paint that he used, the ceramic yeah. paint, I I would do it. It takes so long to mask. Oh yeah. Properly. I I don't. See, that's the thing. I like my equipment to kind of look rough whenever I can. I use the same equipment for a long time, so it's the more you see pro equipment like real field equipment, it's it, it's beat up. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's it's a workhorse thing. But All right. so we we do have one comment that's come in from YouTube. As you can see, I'm shaking oh, the table. Shit. Oh, um, Chris in Rhode Island. Oh, fuck you, Cole. <laughs> Stop so shaking it. Points Stop out that it. we have the wobbliest I will stab table. You right now. Pointed out that we have the wobbliest table ever. And I responded to him by saying, "Yes, and when we start making money from this, we'll replace the table." not even a table. No, it's really not a table. This it's is the best part. It's a bit of wood. It's a bit of wood. It's, on it's a, a bit of wood on top of an old desk frame. Yeah. But it looks like a table. It's functionally a table. And you can shake it. Stop shaking the table. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> We'll have to support the table some other way. Well, I was trying to figure out how we could cross brace it to keep it from moving. Just buy a bunch of wood. It's like we have to build another thing like we built our uh our built our background stand, which is a video that we'll have to make at some point that our background stand is made of wood. But it, it, yeah, but I don't know too many people who have a can hold three nine foot rolls and be semi portable about it. There are portable background stands that hold nine foot rolls. Nah, like we that. the ones that we intentionally didn't buy because they were like one hundred and fifty dollars. No, if they were only one hundred and fifty bucks, I would have bought them. No, we said that they were like one hundred and fifty dollars. Like, now nah, we can just buy some wood. I, it's, no, the ones I was looking at were like five hundred dollars. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, and, most and, people who use those use nine foot rolls have portable solutions for it, because that's well, they, more commonly used. I've seen people put them on C stands if that's what you're talking about. You can put them on C stands. You can put them on purpose built background stands, like they do. You know, I like ours better. It's stable. It's very stable. You can hang from it or hang people from it. I can mount to up death. I can mount up the uh, cloth backgrounds we have, just clip into the sides with A clamps. Yeah, so we'll have to go through how that's funny and we built our shit out of wood. But <laughs> we built most of our own shit. <laughs> that's how it works. But that's what we're good for. Anyway. You have to be able to do stuff like that. You can't. A lot of stuff, especially in studio, is building your own yeah. sets and we got to buy another light for that one. No, I don't. It. Why? Because I stole it. But it's one-sixth of the light Yeah, you're, out you, of one of the two lights. Because I'm 100 watts brighter than you. There's also, but there's one ahead of me, so it, like, there's one yeah, over I my head, so I did give you so a hair light fine. this week. I gave you a hair light this week. <sighs> Which I'm surprised is still there, because you usually re re remove all my lights on me. <laughs> I don't. I move them to where they're supposed to be. All right. 
I moved them. I didn't move anything. I just moved them to the back of the person instead of on the face. It was supposed to be right over your head the way I placed it. Was it was right here last oh, was week. It? Yes. Oh, last, last week, week you yeah. had them on the side of the table. It doesn't make uh, any sense. Week, last, well, it's because we were trying to work in that other corner last week. I like the other corner. I, I think we'll go back and forth between them. I don't care. We can turn around and face the doors. Yeah, the doors are terrible. Doors are pretty I terrible. Hate terrible. Yeah, you should come visit. Our doors are pretty terrible. All right. Hey, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. So. <laughs> you didn't know where you were going with that either, did you? No, that's exactly where I was going with oh, that. Oh, okay. So I, I think that about wraps it up for us. I think it does too. And remember, the conversation gets better when we all get involved. So like comment, share, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your parents, tell your enemies, tell your enemies' friends and your friends' enemies. We need people to make fun of, specifically. We need, no. we, we, we need, we need constructive We need comments. Things. We need things to talk about. Uh, we will keep coming up with stuff on our own, as we have proven for 10 episodes now. But we'd like this to be more of a conversation, and we think that's really... The way we want to move the move on forward from here is to make this much more of an interactive conversation than just us talking to you guys every week. So even if you don't have any interest in photography at all, although I don't know why you'd be watching us if that was the case, I'm sure there are people who are watching us who don't even know that we speak English. But it's got lots of shiny colors. Really? I have no idea. Huh. Cola watches. Uh, he barely speaks English. Well, he barely writes Aliens. English. Aliens. Aliens are watching. It's the only thing I can attribute to how many people have seen this podcast. Uh, how few people have seen this podcast? Yes. All right. Isn't that what I said? I said how many. Yeah, same thing. How many implies a high number. It's higher than I expect. I, sure. <laughs> but so, anyway, anyway, I think that's... Yeah, let's keep this interactive. See you next week.